In this video, I'm going to look at reacting amount calculations that involve calculating volumes of gases. And obviously at the heart of these calculations is this very, very important statement. One mole of any gas at RTP, that's room temperature and pressure, which is 25 degrees C and 100 kilopascals, occupies a volume of 24 decimeters cubed. And that's the same as 24,000 centimeters cubed. And a reminder of the triangle for gases. So we've got volume, number of moles, 24. So if you know how many moles of gas you've got, to find out the volume that that would occupy in decimeters cubed, so V equals number of moles times 24. Obviously, if you want to find out the volume in cubic centimeters, you would multiply by 24,000 there. So we'll start with this question. What volume of carbon dioxide forms when 2.6 kilograms of calcium carbonate decomposes? And there's the equation for this reaction. Obviously, if you want to have a go first, press pause and then play when you're finished. Just like we did in the reacting mass questions, we identify our known and unknown substances. So we know the mass of calcium carbonate, but we want to find the volume of carbon dioxide. So first of all, we'll calculate the moles of our known substance. That's the calcium carbonate. So we know that we've got 2.6 kilograms. Remember, the MRs are in grams per mole. So we can't have kilos and grams in the same expression. So you can see I've converted the kilograms to grams. So that's 2,600 grams divided by the 100.1, the MR of this. And that comes out at 25.97 moles. Because of the one-to-one -one ratio between the known and the unknown, we obviously make 25.97, i.e. the same moles, of carbon dioxide. And to work out the volume, remember this is a volume question now, not a mass question. To work out the volume of the unknown, we use the volume triangle. So V equals moles times 24. And you can see that's coming out at 623.4 decimeters cubed because we multiplied by 24. If the examiner wants the, the answer in centimeters cubed, we would then multiply that again by a thousand, or we could have just put 24,000 in at that stage. So just be aware of the units the examiner wants. We'll have a look at this one now, and I'm introducing um, the ton unit to see how we cope with this. So what volume of carbon dioxide will be produced when 1.2 tonnes of iron is made? We're told that 1 tonne equals 1 times 10 to the 6 grams. So we've identified the known and the unknown. So iron's the known substance. We know that 1.2 tonnes have been made. The unknown substance is that volume of carbon dioxide. So calculating the moles of known the moles of iron. So we know that 1.2 tonnes have been produced. Remember, that needs to be in grams. So we just bring in this conversion factor. So 1.2 tonnes is simply 1.2 times 10 to the 6 grams divided by the MR of iron gives us this many moles. Potentially tricky step now, to work out the moles of the unknown, we need to factor in the mole ratio. And you can see there in the equation, for every two moles of iron that's produced, three moles of carbon dioxide are produced. So that's effectively a 1 to 1.5 ratio. You can see the bigger numbers in front of the carbon dioxide, so we're going to get more moles of CO2. How many times more? Well, it's just 3 over 2 times that. So 3 over 2 times the moles of this gives us the moles of carbon dioxide. And that comes out at that value there. 
and then converting that into a volume. Remember, we need to find out the volume of carbon dioxide. So we multiply the moles of carbon dioxide by the volume of one mole, which is 24 decimeters cubed. So we get 774193.5 decimeters cubed. And we'll just stick something else in now. What if the question had said at the start that you had to give your answer in centimeters cubed and it wanted it to three significant figures? What would be your final answer? So to get it into centimeters cubed, we need to multiply our decimeter cubed value by a thousand. We get this value here. And to give it to three significant figures, we look at the first four numbers. So we've got this three, these three numbers here. Then we need to look at the fourth number to see if we need to do anything with this number here. Well, that's a one. Well, that's not going to change that four. So then it's so it, so it's seven seven four, and then all those zeros. And obviously, with all those zeros there, standard form would be very appropriate. You don't have to, but if you're comfortable with standard form, then you may as well put it into standard form. So that would come out at 7.74 times 10 to the power 8. So obviously the decimal point's here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places after that. So we need 10 to the 8. We'll just finish with the steps. So just as we did in the reacting mass question, the first thing we do is we identify the known and the unknown substances in the balanced equation. We then calculate the moles of the known substance. Now that would normally be given in as a mass. So you can see the mass formula there. The number of moles equals the mass divided by the MR. And just be careful that your mass is in grams. So if it's given in kilos or it's given in um, tons, you have to convert to grams first. So once you've got the moles of the known substance, the mole ratio will tell you the moles of the unknown substance. And then once you know the moles of the unknown, you can turn that into a volume by multiplying the moles by 24. And of course, if you use the 24, your answer will come out in decimeters cubed. Just be careful again. What does the examiner want? Do they want it in cubic centimeters? And if they do, it has to be then multiplied by a thousand again.